So, uh, let's talk about Legato playing, and uh, I, I'm going to have to do some talking here, because I, I mean, there's just a lot to say about it. So it's not, here's what Legato's not. It's not just throwing your pick away and uh, just hoping for the best and just playing with all hammers and pull-offs. No, that's, that's not what it is. It's a smooth, it's as Chopin did it, and he was the first one, the pianist Frederick Chopin. He w practiced legato by playing a scale and having each note uh, kind of overlap with the next. And um, so... <laughs> So, I mean, it's, each note just is right up against the next one. Now, what people do, and if you're doing like the John Petrucci kind of uh, alternate form of like heavy metal legato, it's just like... And if you see, if you, if you hear all that, I mean, it's fast, but... Uh, I mean, it's not good at all, but the thing is, is that it's still staccato. It, you can play hammer on, all hammer-ons and pull-offs and still not be doing legato. So let's figure out a way to do real, true legato, like, you know, Hallsworth would do, something like... some scales and normally the more notes on a string the better for this kind of legato so you're going to want to try and do get some four note per string going and i like uh four notes than three notes because it repeats in octaves and you don't have to uh you don't have to worry about getting shifted all the way up to the end of the neck by a four note per string That's what you want, and yeah, there it is. But I like I like uh, doing these pivots. So Chopin did it in his A22 Opus 25. You know? See that? Yeah. So there's a, there, there's a pivot straight from Chopin. And you might notice another thing about this kind of legato playing. There's no pull-offs. None of that. Uh, it's all hammers. And, you might ask why, because when you pull off, it changes the tone. And if you have any kind of change in the sound, you're not doing legato anymore. It's uh, something else. So you got to have a uniformity of tone and uniformity of volume. Uh, so you got to level. You got to make the pick attack just as loud as your finger attack. And to help really help, you might just want to use the flesh, your fingertips. See that? I'm using the flesh. I'm like, I'll pick the first. And then I'll do it with the middle finger to sound the A string. A string. See, I'm using a seven string here, so the third from the bottom is A. So if we're going to do all hammers, um, then that means we can do stuff like the hammer on from nowhere. And this will help you get in the mood of uh, doing no pull-offs because you can't pull off. You have this kind of thing. So we're going to do this pattern. See? One on the low, uh, on the, on the uh, E string, 
then mm-hmm. the second fret on A, then the third fret on the E, and then fourth on the A. So you're laying all your fingers down, but they're just kind of uh, staggered. But um, that's that's a good uh, 16th note uh, exercise. You can also do it in diminished seven. scale guitar. This is a three-quarter scale, so it'd be pretty tough to do that. Um, but another thing we have to do is we have to make each note flow into the next. Just like on the piano, pianos had to practice that, we have to make sure that each note goes right up to the next note. So it's not... So you kind of you kind of let the note off. So you need to practice laying all the fingers down and leaving them down. take your finger off, you're kind of letting know it's not extending to its full value. And another thing that helps is sliding. Sliding really, I mean, it, it, um, it's kind of, it, once you control it, it's good. Because it gives your fingers a rest and it's really smooth sounding, so it just helps. And you can try this uh, Garcet exercise, uh, it's some based on what he did uh, transcribe. Sounds good. It's not even better if I was in tune, but. And Garcet liked to sweep with his uh with his fingers. He would just his fingertips just pull off in a row like that. So that gave him a more uh, legato sound because uh, it wasn't a, a pick striking the strings. Um, here's another lick Garcet did from uh, his unaccompanied solo. you can do because you don't have to worry about picking each note. Uh, so I think we covered it all there. Um, we're going to need a lot of uh, chromatic neighbor tones, though if you don't have four, if you don't know how to do four notes per string, you don't want to do that anyway, like it's too hard. So you want to uh, get chromatic passing tones. Like, I mean, a whole lick of them is a little much, but it's a way to play scales and still to scalar type playing, but do arpeggios. And of course, the chromatic scale is great exercise for legato. So try all that and have fun playing legato.